Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Saturday, August the 12th, 2017. In the Atlantic Basin, we do have Invest Area 99L. It has been around for quite a few days. Now, looking like it might actually develop. 60% chance in the short term, next 48 hours anyway. 70% chance over the next five days. If we look at it in the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook map, you can see that the probability in the red here, but going to stay off of the coast of the U.S. between Bermuda and Cape Hatteras uh, as it reaches its presumed peak intensity up here. Uh, so what this could mean, and this is good news, I guess, is that maybe it will generate some swells. Even if it's a tropical storm, it could do so and that might aid in some increased decent surf, so something we can keep an eye on and talk about later as this develops or not. But it looks like it's finally going to enter some truly favorable conditions and actually develop. And if we look at the satellite imagery of it this morning, a pretty good flare-up of showers and thunderstorms associated with it, and it may finally be on its way after a very long journey off the coast of Africa out here, looking like it could develop and become a big player for southeast weather, uh, at least from the GFS model. And then it kind of went away and was very sketchy through here. It didn't look like it was going to do anything. And the European model kept on, and it looks like it'll turn out to be generally correct in the evolution of this system. And uh, the reason it won't affect the United States, there's just too much westerly flow up here, troughiness over the U.S., uh, not enough strong ridging over the Atlantic to steer this into the southeast coast. That simply is not present. Um, some energy trying to gather out this way over the next few days and then spilling on out into the tropical Atlantic may try to develop. We don't see that quite yet on the five-day outlook, but I think it's coming uh, anything showing up on the GFS, and we're going to look at that in a minute, is probably going to be looked at with some pretty deep suspicion from here on out since the GFS has been full of false alarms. But we'll get to that in just a little bit. Looking at the vorticity signature for 99L, uh, a little bit of an oval shape to it, but definitely increasing in the vorticity, the energy or the spin uh, beginning to ramp up. And so this could become a tropical depression over the next couple of days and then eventually maybe even a tropical storm. And like I said, that could bring some additional swells uh, and unfortunately the threat of rip currents as well, depending on how close this gets to the U.S. But don't let that part fool you. Uh, there's enough. I mean, you can just see this energy right here sitting over the eastern U.S. and that in and of itself tells me and then there's more energy trying to rotate down here through the Great Lakes, that this will have a curvature like that away from the southeast U.S. But maybe it can bring some additional swells for the surfers to take advantage of. And again, we're going to be watching this area over the next few days as it moves out further into the tropical Atlantic. We also have Tropical Storm Hova over here in the eastern Pacific. Believe it or not, part of the genesis of this can be traced back to what was Hurricane Franklin uh, after it made landfall the low level center died very quickly but the mid and upper upper level vorticity maximum the vort max as it's called the energy uh, made it across Mexico believe it or not and it has become a new tropical storm uh, with a new low level center in the Pacific and so we have Hova over there so looking at the track models here for 99L Again, very, very tightly clustered overall on a turn away from the United States. Close enough, though, for the most part. Again, I know we have a lot of surfers that uh, live along the East Coast, obviously, and you know maybe this will radiate out just enough swell activity over time to increase the odds of some decent waves. But uh, and I'll address that probably starting on Monday, once this presumed, uh, presumably develops and we get an idea of the wave forecasts from there. Uh, as I mentioned, Hova in the eastern Pacific, 40 mile per hour winds, 
moving west northwest at 12 knots and not going to become a hurricane it does appear and looking at its track models uh, generally a westward course right along 20 north isn't that amazing just for what it's worth here the uh, incipient system that you know developed this let me get back over here was like I said Franklin and Franklin once it got up here to about 20 north has stayed generally on that course and will stay on 20 north for quite some time interesting tidbit there for you so yeah that'll move on out into the open Pacific not going to be a problem for the Baja so no worries there now I want to show you the MJO not because the GFS and the Euro completely disagree with each other that's not necessarily the point this time uh, but I will point that out the MJO the Madden Julian oscillation from the GFS and its ensemble forecast system from the 11th of August to the 25th uh, really showing a major amplification into phases 8 and 1 which would generally be favorable for the Western Hemisphere and Africa as it shows there uh, but the European model the ECMWF and its ensemble members show very little to no MJO activity see it's all in here within the circle what we call the null phase or incoherent it's just there's no discernible MJO activity over the next two weeks according to the euro so here's what I want to point out besides this glaring difference right now the uh, MJO is in the null phase see that and that is uh, shown on both models at least that parts right I mean it's got to get the actual analysis correct you would think so both of those show in the null phase and both of those show staying in the null phase uh, for the next several days before they start to really diverge significantly right so we can agree on all of that so despite the fact that there's no MGO activity and even though the euro shows that remaining the case over the next two weeks then it strengthens my argument the other day maybe it was yesterday I don't even know uh, that hey look this is going to develop it looks like finally and there's no MJO activity and we have tropical storm Hova in the eastern Pacific and that is developing in the absence of an MJO and other systems are likely to develop uh, over the next couple of weeks as well in the absence of any substantial Madden Julian oscillation activity and so that just shows you that this is not the trigger that guarantees development and if we look at the GFS for what it's worth and you never know right it might not be worth anything over the next five days uh, we do see some energy gathering down here in the deep tropics again south of this large ridge and within just a few days it starts to close off and become more organized and for what it's worth the European model does show this as well generally speaking and maybe some of the other models as well I didn't poll all of them but uh, by the end of the period at the end of the five days you know the GFS once again advertising a tropical system somewhere in this vicinity and that too in the absence of any upward motion on a large scale even over the next five days the aggressive uh, GFS ensemble system really not showing much you know these are each one of these is a day and there's just not much there so you know just kind of pointing out that you do not need an active MJO to get development uh, anywhere around the globe it's just part of it it's not everything and by the way there is the reflectivity for 99L not very impressive but we shall see yeah what happens certainly looks like it's trying to get there via satellite so that's about it for today nothing major to worry about at all um, and again maybe the good news here is that the system when it develops assuming that it does uh, will provide some surf for the East Coast and seriously once we get into early next week and that begins to materialize we also need to emphasize the possible risk 
of increased rip currents along the eastern United States. Also, coming up on Monday, in a separate update, I'm going to talk about the eclipse that's coming up on the 21st. As of Monday, it'll be a week away. And we'll look at that separately. Like I said, it'll be a an off-topic hurricane outlook and discussion, not just an off-season or whatever. I do those, you know, from December through May. But that eclipse is going to be a pretty big deal, obviously. And I do want to talk about it a little bit. And uh, there is some relationship to, you know, the hurricane season. What if there's a hurricane? Hey, that would be pretty amazing to something that's already pretty amazing. And we'll talk about to that as well in a separate update on Monday. Have a great rest of your Saturday. Thanks for tuning in. That's it from me for today. I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have another video discussion for you tomorrow.